Hi everyone. Thought I'd sort of have a, a bit of a discussion and chat about painting uh, more seasonal uh, paintings and subjects. Just probably in the last 12, maybe 18 months, I've kind of returned to Trump wanting to uh, painting some snow scenes. Uh, I think it was probably really kicked on by my recent trip to New Zealand, which this is a pretty classic North Island scene. Uh, it is almost sort of semi uh, uh, southern tropical, uh, the, the top part of New Zealand can, the North Island of New Zealand can get, but then they have, and they are kind of volcanoes, that's probably the, the downside of the snow scenes in the North Island, but um, I think this was just a, a car that was driving along the road, a bit of a vintage car, but they are quite spectacular uh, as a subject because and, and to a degree, uh, uh, quite tricky as well, because what we have to watch is just how uh, dark or light the values are. I always tended to misread the values in the background, thinking, oh, geez, you know what, that looks pretty dark, especially this guy in, which I grabbed from that middle section there, and it's technically not that dark at all because it's not even halfway. So that's the one, uh, if there's one little lesson that I can pass on, the light or the, the darkness of the values aren't quite as dark as we think. Uh, and we're really pushing the, the atmospheric blues with these. This is a scene from Australia. Uh, the one distinct thing that we do have with our ski fields is a lot of foliage. Uh, they're normally probably the s snow gum. We have about 120 different gum trees in Australia, but just a lovely contoured shape there. If I were to paint this, I'd be breaking that line up a little. Uh, but just uh, the marvelous thing with snow scenes is that a little bit like a beach scene, they hold the light so well because we get such a instant contrast. If this was say a dark green, uh, say from Ireland or the wetter parts of England or New England, uh, we wouldn't get that tonal contrast because the darker something goes, and even if it's in light, means we don't get that lovely bounce because it's almost like a tone of, let me just grab it, a tone of about, my guess is kind of middle of the road, probably about a four. Yeah, that's pretty close. If we were to think the middle of this chart top and bottom is the light and dark so that's where it comes up and down so yeah that's about a four and technically they say we shouldn't use white but there looks like there's a tiny little bit of yellow in this image actually it's red uh, so that's kind of right up here so yeah so that's a it looks like there's a, a guy skiing there but then we have a, a scene from Connecticut and the beauty is with different regions of the world uh, this was from uh, 2013 uh, is we get quite unique uh, buildings uh, foliage or, or trees um, so that's always the other little battle as well and this one's from Canada which it is quite barren uh, and dry uh, so that's almost the complete opposite where this is kind of devoid of of color and those values are definitely a little darker back in there. Let's see if I can find it nice. And it's normally the shadows is where we do need to start. Any area of depth, especially in mountains, when we have a clear one step, two steps, three, and then this big hill, we've got four, and then with the sky, so that gives us five. It's more about the shadows. That's where we need to start the conversation in our mind or the, the, the discussion, the planning in our mind. In regards to the uh, the shadows first and then we put the mid-tones on and this is a scene from Italy I borrowed this one from Google Images I haven't been able to uh, see too much snow in Italy I've only had the one winter trip and unfortunately it was quite overcast and that can be one of the difficult parts uh, but I'm probably not saying anything new in that regard um, so this really does a powerful blue sky so we're going to get very, very blue shadows. But I do love the idea of having uh, some sort of building or tree or some sort of 
extra thing so that we can, where this one doesn't quite have that, but the small trees can give us an idea. Because a lot of times it's difficult to judge scale uh, with mountains. So that's where uh, bringing in, uh, say, tree, oops, I'll bring in some red, a tree line, and we kind of know the standard size of a tree, even though snow gums are technically a little smaller than a, a standard gum tree. But we'll say with a car or the fence line, uh, the building sets us up nicely. Some trees on here helps, and then this one will ultimately help as well. When it comes to art, there is no single right or wrong answer. However, there are still a lot of concepts and techniques that students need to learn to create a strong visual language. This course is designed to help you develop and find your own visual language so that you can start expressing yourself more confidently because over the years I've studied and noted the areas where students tend to struggle the most and then I've delved deeply into these topics. So we will cover the basics of colour, edge, how to achieve a strong contrast from light to dark, focal points and creating depth so that you can start to use it effectively in your work. I'll demonstrate a wide range of subjects which I believe will broaden your horizons and allow you to gain experiences that you may have only dreamed of trying. By the end of this course, you'll have a better understanding of how to express your own visual language and create artwork that is both successful and expressive. I invite you to join me for an exciting year of learning and exploration.